Hi everyone and welcome to a No Nonsense Whiskey live tasting. This is the first one of these things that we've done uh, ever actually and today as you might see we've got uh, Richard over here who's a uh, McMira guy. Hi Richard, how you doing? Hello Vin, very well, thank you. Uh, glad to be uh, here. Awesome to be the first people doing it as well and uh, yeah well done for starting it up. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll do a proper introduction with Richard in a moment, but really the first thing I want to do is introduce the idea of these tastings and uh, what we're doing here and what it's all about for you guys. Now, a bunch of you in the comments and all sorts will already know what's going on because you'll have received a pack in the post. And the idea behind this is to have a normal live stream like we all know and love, but have uh, mass amounts of people in the comments section also drinking along with us. Um, it's uh, been a, a bit of a logistical thing to get going, but um, I think that this thing's got legs and hopefully you guys do too. The reason why we're working with McMira today, they've been a huge supporter of the channel and um, realistically, I mean, especially guys like Richard, um, I've been working with him for a couple of years now and we all get on great and it made absolute perfect sense for these guys to be the first up in this sort of thing. So yeah, um, basically the, the thing we want to do going forwards, if this is a success, and hopefully it will be, and you guys want to be interested in, in, in more tastings in the future, the best way of doing it is to follow me on social and to be on my uh, email list, which you can go on my website, nonsensewhiskey.com, and you can sign up to my email list and you'll be the first to know about them basically. That's the, the long and short of how we're going to be doing this thing. Um, let's talk to Richard a little bit about the, uh, the whiskies that we've got on today and um, the running order and stuff like that. So yeah, sorry about that, Richard. We're a bit of an admin, but um, how are you doing? No, yeah, very well, and, and, uh, and no problem whatsoever. I think it's good to uh, good to let everyone know what you're doing. I think, as I said a minute ago, I think it's fantastic that you've started this up. It feels like sort of a natural progression for you to do this sort of thing after everything that you've been doing with your channel for so long. So yeah, and again, you know, very happy to be here, and uh, thank you for having us. No, absolutely. Um, it's funny, just as you said before um, we went live, it's like I, I feel a bit rusty about this. I haven't done any live streams in a while. Um, so uh, hopefully this will start flowing uh, as we go along. Um, usually a bit of uh, excellent spirit helps with that sort of thing. <laughs> Indeed it does, yeah. Yeah, so we've got a good few people in at the moment. We've got 31 people on um, on YouTube, uh, I guess a few people on Facebook, hopefully as well. Don't forget to hit uh, the like button and uh, the subscribe button if you're not already. That would be lovely. Um, you've got your packs in front of you and I want to get uh, the running order sorted out before we carry on so that you guys know what we're doing because the box order is not the running order that we, we're doing today. Um, we, we spoke about that the other day, Richard. That's some uh, someone who didn't understand maybe the order of things, chucking them in, I reckon. But hopefully everyone has the same um, whiskies. But we're going to be doing the, um, the Bourbon Elegant first, then the X Cognac Elegant then the export elegant and then finally finishing up with the smoky one um so they go up in uh, intensity they go up in um, smokiness with the final one being smoky of course they also go up in abv so we think this makes a bit more sense yeah yes yeah, so this, this is this is the correct order when we do our consultations with people uh, when we're talking about reserve cast on a one-on-one -on -one, um yeah this is the order that we'd we'd run through um, yeah uh, and as we go through as well um uh, Whiskey Shares just asked if it's if the running orders per pack. Hopefully that's just a bit of a lag thing there uh, and you caught what I said there. But what I'll do is I'll throw up the name of what we're drinking uh, underneath me. So um, hopefully nobody will get lost. Um, I guess one final bit of admin then is to say um, we the whole point of this is to be as inclusive of, as we can. Um, obviously, it was difficult to, to, to not do this kind of Zoom related so everyone can have a little chat. But the idea really is to get everyone who's watching and drinking along with us your opinions. So please do chuck up questions for me and Richard. Please do chuck up tasting notes. Nothing is silly. So if you get some kind of weird stuff, then please do let us know. I'm sure Richard will use it on some marketing or something later on saying this person said this. Um, but yeah, that's it. Just make sure you chuck out some comments to us. Um, so yeah, let's go back to Richard then and uh, he can introduce himself properly because um, I just said, hello, Richard. And um, he can let us know exactly what he's been doing with himself recently. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, so, I mean, on the more recent side, I'll just jump straight in and I have just seen Nick from uh, um, uh, New Dram Drinkers just uh, congratulate me on, on, a, on a wedding well had a couple of weeks ago. So that's on the more recent side. So, so thanks very much. And congratulations, um, man. I posted about it for the first time yesterday as well on, on social media and stuff and got a lot of love and uh, yeah, it felt, felt very nice. So um, thanks very much to anyone who did uh, did say congrats and things like that. Couldn't be happier. Um, but in terms of a bit about me, I think most of the people that I've seen actually in the comments so far are people that I already 
no in one way or another i'd say there's a few new names and stuff in there but um rich mckinn worked for mac Mira, um as you can probably tell if you haven't guessed already um started getting into whiskey the summer of 2013 discovered mac Mira 2018 started working for them um february last year so about three weeks before lockdown came in and then uh, as a brand ambassador immediately became an armchair brand ambassador and sat inside for a year and then as of i think march or april um i'm now the area sales manager for the south so i look after everything south of nottingham with our retailers and, and things like that people who sell bottles for us and then do all the ambassador stuff of an evening as well so um lucky for me it is my hobby yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I can imagine it would be um, hard to do if you uh, didn't kind of love the spirit because uh, that's yeah. how you got into this industry, right? You were you just loved whiskey and you fancied getting into into the whiskey itself. Yeah, that, that, that's that's exactly it. I had a, a career before that. I then uh, I had my own business for a while and thought I wanted to get into whiskey, sacked it off so that I could get a job and uh, that allowed me some time in the evenings to get some qualifications and things and do a bit of networking. Worked in a warehouse for the better part of two years, loading things into lorries so that I could have, you know, some spare time and stuff of an evening, as I said, to study. And, uh, yeah, then met Shane Peary, who may or may not be watching now. If he's having an evening off for his dinner, we'll see. And, um, yeah, the rest is history as of February last year. So, you know, it took me two years to get into it, but um, couldn't be happier now that I am. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, we've uh, we've said about the running order, so hopefully everyone's kind of poured their first one out at least. But before we get into that, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about the uh, McMira itself and what this uh, reserve cask program is all about? Yeah, great. So, uh, so on the McMira side, we are uh, Sweden's first single malt whiskey. Um, started in 1999, had eight founders of uh, both uh, men and women decided why you know that's well asked the question, I suppose, why is nobody making whiskey in sweden there's a massive appetite for it there but no one was actually making any so uh, so they started off and um you know a few years later whiskey's ready um they set out to be sort of quintessentially swedish from the outset rather than just be um a scottish style whiskey that happened to be in another country basically and one of the or three of the the pillars i suppose the things that they wanted to follow to try and do that was to you know be be swedish be innovative be sustainable and um i think you know amongst other things that's sort of achieved by using Swedish ingredients. So everything that we use is is Swedish, including our smoked malt that we actually malt um, ourselves because nobody in Sweden was malting any barley at the time. And and I don't think they are even now. So we do that ourselves uh, rather than sort of order it in from elsewhere. Um, Lots of different processes. I mean, we can talk a bit about that when we get more more into the drams and things as well. But um, yeah, and then on the innovative and sustainable side, experimenting with different casks, um, you know, not just sort of the well not not the things you tend to see quite often coming out of you know the more regular countries let's say you know some of the more sort of um, exotic cast types people I think might have seen our green tea cask you know last year I know that you um, thought quite highly of it as well yeah me oh, yeah. too and, um, yeah and then on the sustainable side you know a carbon neutral distillery and all sorts of other little things as well that we do in terms of sustainability um you quickly we've been in three different locations since we started first few years a series of gardens moving from one to the other when the neighbours complained um, from the, the founder's gardens, that is, while we we're still experimenting with different um, barleys and and processes and things. And then, um, yeah, the Brooks Distillery for a bit, and then we're in the Gravity Distillery, which if anyone's cottoned onto Matt Mira before, is probably that's one of the things that I think stands out, big 35-metre tall vertical distillery, starts at the top, works its way down, and there's all sorts of other technology and things going on in there as well. Um We've got warehouses all over Sweden, and I think that's something we'll talk about, certainly when we get into the trams. Um, you know, we've got one on top of a mountain, one on an island, one in a mine, one in a forest, uh, sort of spread out all over, and then uh, one or two in Germany as well. Um, all of our whiskey, um, the stuff that's released, in, in terms of like expressions as opposed to the, the single car stuff, designed by Angela Duraccio, um, uh, our master blender, a.k.a. our chief nose officer. That's her official title with us. Um, but she, while she doesn't obviously, you know, uh, create the single casks because by their nature, it's just a single cask that's come out. It doesn't need a master blender to, um, you know, change the flavours or anything. She does oversee um, in many ways a lot of the production from the start just to make sure that what comes out of the other end is something that she can work with. So although she's not created the stuff that we've got here today, she has had an influence on how things are, are made, basically. Um, last couple of things. I so say you've got three key ranges with our expressions. So you've got core range, seasonal range, moment range. 
Um, I think we talked about that and lots of other tastings before, but uh, but check those out online, you'll be able to see. And um, yeah, in addition to that, those the the whiskies that we sell, a massive part of our business, more so in Sweden until recently here, has been selling casks, selling 30 litre casks in particular. So since 2002, they started a, a cask program uh, there over in Sweden. And I think since then we've sold 20 to 22,000 30 litre casks, primarily in Sweden, but we're selling more and more now in the UK since we've sort of set up shop here properly in the last few years and uh, doing more. So the reserve cask is what we've got um, here today. The other program we've got, and I think I've seen a name or two that I know have got a bottle from the ready casks. Um, we've got ready casks, 30 litre casks, all bottled, ready to go. You choose your label, you sample whichever cask you want, and you know, you've got it eight, eight to 12 weeks later, fingers crossed. Um, and then we've got the reserve cask, which we have here now. So this is more about um, uh, choosing and selecting all sorts of stuff from the beginning, from a range of different options I'll go through in a moment, um, and designing your own whiskey, basically. And then something else that's launched in the last, I think, two weeks has been our rum cask, um, a special rum cask that we've been doing, 28 litres, and they'll be maturing on a barge um, on the river. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this often, so I'm going to say the River Seine, but in Paris, if someone could pronounce it better than I let me know um but yeah we're working with Maison Ferrand to plantation rum and they've got a, a floating barge as I said on the river in Paris where we're um where the where the whiskey company that they're working with so we've got a few hundred casts that will be um able to go in there over the coming weeks and months as well I think mean, that's probably about it for a whistle stop tour Vin I think we're probably I'm as keen as anyone else to get into the whiskies themselves so should we get a dram in a glass and then I'll talk a bit more about what the reserve cast is I suppose absolutely yeah i mean let, let's not keep people thirsty right let's do it so i've, I've handily got a mine at the back here uh let me throw up on screen what um this one is this is the uh the bourbon slash elegant and we'll go through a bit what um those words mean uh in a bit because i hope i mean i'm not sure how people are watching how familiar you are with the reserve cast but um one of the awesome things about it is is how many uh combinations that you can achieve through it uh, and i guess we'll talk about that a little bit we've got a lot of elegance here as well but um that's it so yeah this first one as uh, anyone who's drinking it will know uh, but i'll detail the stuff that's on the, the front here um this is why i bought a new camera by the way but i you know, have to webcam for these live streams <laughs> uh this is the bourbon elegant um filled in 2014 bottled in 2020 30 liter cast and the bodas am i saying that right bodas yeah that's that's how i say it but then uh, you're asking the wrong man i think yeah that's fair that's fair uh, and 45 percent um which is pretty cool because this is stuff that we um we, like we don't usually see in your core range um this is just how it comes out of the cask right yeah yeah so these these are all um natural cast strength yeah yeah that, i mean yeah super interesting super interesting um so yeah do you want to um tell us a little bit about um maybe this one in particular or maybe expand into um the the bodas mine a little bit i think we've got some some videos and stuff to play while we're talking about it but we'll get there cool we'll yeah there. Well, um so so the i think everyone's got their well hopefully everyone at least the people that, that were due mm -hmm. pack have got um the label in front of them now but yeah 45 percent abv as you said filled um the 12th of the third 2014 and then bottled the 25th so yeah so six years and a, a, a few weeks um in a 30 litre ex bourbon cask all of our ex bourbon casks come from the brown foreman cooperage um in the states uh, once known as the bluegrass cooperage um so they supply the likes of uh, jack daniels and woodford reserve basically and that's where we get all of our our, boat, uh, our bourbon casks um over from um and then yeah the the other thing that's on the label as well is the the bodas or the bodas mines so if you've got a video for it, let's have a look. Yeah, um, I I love this video, and uh, and I'll just I'll say just quickly, I've uh, for the first time in my uh, sixteen month career with Matt Mira, I will be going over to Sweden next week, and uh, I will be able to film my own video going down here as well. So uh, yeah, I can't describe how excited uh, I am. Um, but yes, yeah, so you drive that into the mine, so. Um, the Swedish cold, the bitter Swedish climate, you don't really want to you know, mature too much whiskey um, 
up there, I mean, up above the ground, if you can help it, because it's going to take quite a long time uh, to mature. At least that was the thinking of the founders at the time um, when we moved in here in 2005. So it's 50 metres below ground is where we keep about 90 to 95 percent of our whiskey. The vast majority of it is matured down here. There's 10 big cavernous rooms. It's an ex iron ore mine. It's been used for a number of things um, over the last sort of 130 years or so. Um, but for the last, what, I think 15 now, give or take, um, we've been using it uh, for ourselves. 10 big cavernous rooms split into different categories. There's a spiced room, which is um, what Angela calls casks, such as, you know, sort of Swedish oak, for example, because, you know, a bit peppery. Then the bourbon rooms and, you know, the more exotic rooms and things there as well. That's Anders. He's our CFO going around having a look at some of the smaller casks here. So these are specifically the reserve casks that you can keep. You can choose to keep down in the Bodas mine. Uh, there are a number of different warehouses that you can choose to have your whiskey maturing in, and Bodas uh, is uh, one of them. Um, so here we can see some of the bigger casks uh, as well. Um, interestingly, I think for any sort of whiskey geeks out there, and especially anyone who hasn't heard um, me or, or any sort of any of us at Matt Mirror talk about it before, um, we spoke. You know, the, the ABV of this natural cast strength at forty-five percent that happens um because of the climate basically down in the mine so um we keep it at a, a constant temperature or relatively constant between five and seven degrees celsius but the humidity down there you can imagine the amount of angel share that's hanging around in the air as well as just everything else that's going on down there the humidity is usually up at around 99 percent, which is massive and uh anyone that knows anything about sort of whiskey maturation will will know um you know the, the the higher the humidity the faster you lose abv so your angel share you still get an angel share of course but what you lose at a faster rate than normal is abv so this this what and with a 30 liter cask as well that process is um you know multiplied basically it's you know even faster than it would be in a larger cask so yeah so that's the bonus mine basically yeah in a in a nutshell mm. I'll say cheers and i'll wet my whistle as well and thanks for having us again yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, one of the things um, that we like you might have seen on other social media kind of um, tastings is, um, you know, we spend a bit of time on the nose and a bit of time on the on the palate. Uh, I'm not sure how these things will go in the future, but I don't tend to worry about that too much. Um, so chuck out your nose and your palate um, tastings whenever you get them. Um, you know, this is as much uh, everyone's watching as tasting as it is ours. So, um, yeah, I'll be throwing them up on the screen and we'll respond to some comments uh, and questions as they go. Um, I should say as well, I didn't say earlier, if you do have a question, um, make sure you at me um, so that it highlights it for me because um, I was expecting the chat to be quick, but not this quick. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I must get someone to do the background for me like you guys do. <laughs> I've got, I can answer Jack's question there. So Jack, is this one first bill bourbon? Um, yes, it would be. Yeah, th this is. So um, if, it's a, if it's a second fill, you'll see like a, a dash and a one basically. So that's the yeah rather confusingly the second time that something's gone into it. Mm. Um, yeah, I've seen lots of yeah sweet sweet sounding things. Apple sour tank, but yeah. So Ryan, that's um, I think Ryan. I've actually tried an ex bourbon cast with him in the past, and um, yeah, apple sour tank fastix. So that's definitely definitely mm. something that I can recognise in uh, in the ex bourbon cast that we have for sure. Absolutely. I mean, one of the things I get. Um, I've always said this about McMurray. You've got. Um, Although you're so in innovative in, in the casks cho uh, choices that you make and the, the bottlings that you produce, there's always this house style that propagates through the ranges. And it's always this um, tropical, slightly banana -y note that uh, lingers on all of your expressions, I think. Um, and, and definitely on this, this is uh, it's, it's high on there. Well, that's that's probably a good opportunity I think, to talk about the different recipes, maybe that mm -hmm. that people can choose from. So, um, yeah, we mentioned uh, that is, there's lots of different things to choose from, and lots of. Uh, do you know what? I probably should have actually sort of done some math before and thought about how many different, you know, variables or, or how many different outcomes or you can get um, at the end. But so with the reserve cast, I said you can choose and design everything from the start, um, and then fill the cask basically. Um, and incidentally, if you know things are a bit more normal and, and Sweden comes off the amber list, you can actually go over to Sweden and physically fill the cask yourself as well as part of it. Um, and until then, we're doing virtual fillings where sort of we we uh, we join on Teams or Zoom. Uh, a couple of my colleagues in Sweden will come along and um, do a bit of a talk first, and then take a, a laptop into a room and you can watch your cask being filled. But um, there are three or four, I think, key things to choose between. So there's a spirit type the cast type, the warehouse location, and then your own labels, basically, and the name that you want to have on the brass plaque. So spirit type, you mentioned about being, you know, sort of the elegant recipe. 
you know, there being a sort of a, a theme, it's, you know, it needs to be consistent, of course, but throughout the range it always seems to be there, you know, um, well, or- orchard fruits for me, sort of gentle spices and um, you know, sort of a herbaceous sort of herbal tone uh, knocking around in the background as well. So, yeah, we'll get loads of orchard fruits. So I actually read that one up there. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's, that's spot on. Dash. So, well, Yash even, beg your pardon. Um, so spirit type, there's five different spirit types to choose from. Really, there's there's three and then two that have been pre-aged, basically. So you've got elegant recipe, which is our word for un- unpeated. You've got the smoky recipe. You've got extra smoky recipe, which is quite simply just double the amount of smoke. And then uh, the other two, the pre-aged ones I mentioned, you can have a pre-aged elegant recipe and a pre-aged smoky recipe. And what that is, is something that is both of those spirits would have spent four years. So they are now whiskey, in fact, in a 200 litre ex-bourbon cask. So then they're sat there like ready, waiting to be transferred into a 30 litre cask as well. So the benefit of that basically is instead of waiting three years or more, you could be waiting anywhere from you know one to two years perhaps for your your whiskey to be ready because it is already whiskey when it goes in um cast types there's i try to remember off the top of my head now but there's um well i'll do the easy ones that we've got here ex bourbon ex cognac port and american oak but then there's oloroso there's px sherry um swedish oak and um and now as i mentioned the rum cast as well that we've started doing and have you tried have you tried the caribbean the moment caribbean vin um, no, actually, I've got, I've got a sample of it up on my shelf up here, and it's just um, you know, you know what it's like when you've got so much stuff. It's um, to get round to it, but um, yeah. I've, I've heard good things about that. I heard good things about it. So that that that's one of my. I think that if if not maybe it's my flavour of the month, perhaps I suppose. Yeah. But that that's one of my favourite um, whiskies of ours. Like full stop. I think our, our spirit seems to work very well for me in particular in American oak, um, but in rum casks as well. Just uh, there's there's something special about it. Um, but yeah, so the rum casks are on offer now as well. And then we've got them in sort of a, a tiered thing. I'll go through sort of prices later on. But um, you know, I think there's tier one to four for the cast types, and um, and a, a slight change in price for um the spirit types as well but again sort of go for a bit later on so yeah so that's the spirit types you can choose there's five of those there's five or six different casks that you can choose from and um, warehouse locations there's two i think available on our website now but if you speak to us and ask nicely we can find you some other warehouses knocking around as well um but those and then choosing your own label and uh, designing your own label as well they did used to look like this um so they come as the mcmira reserve here we go bottle and then you'd have all the details written on this card. I'm not showing that um, upside down. But then you can choose now. And I know I've seen a couple of whiskey circus peaks in the crowd as well. But yeah, you can choose. You can design your own label now. So you can have something quite, you know, over the top, let's say, or, or, or handsome, or you can have something nice and sophisticated, like uh, like Milroy's have got here. So you can choose all your own label stuff as well. Well. No, what we've got what's uh, what have you got in the comments let's see what um it's, it's funny actually i just um uh, you know there's always teething issues on the first one um and apparently i set up this thing called nightbot a while ago and it's deleting people's comments but i've removed it now everybody sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so. Yeah, yeah, basically people were putting emojis and it was deleting their comments. But yeah, so apologies to everyone watching for that. You can now go nuts with the emojis again, hopefully. I think nightbot's been been put on the naughty step. Um <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so Shinjuku Sensei is asking, um, will these four be available retail? And that's um, probably a, a good op- opportunity to say, not really, no. <laughs> no, yeah, not not these. So these are these are these are specifically we've used these just as examples for. Um, so these casks were all split down into about hundreds of packs, basically, for us to use as a group. So um, what you're actually drinking this evening, when when we do talk to people about reserve casks, the, the step steps usually would be someone goes online. Um, or you know, or they've spoken to us directly. Uh, they book a reserve cast consultation, which I think is about twenty-eight pounds or so on our site. And um, yeah, we send um, some like meeting details. We meet up. You have the drams arrive, and then we go through and talk about. We use these almost as a like a, a, a let me say like a vehicle or just examples because obviously this you know, the reserve cast is about designing your own whiskey, and you won't mm. know what that's exactly going to be like to the you know to the to a T until it's ready. Um, so these are basically just like you know examples that we can have um, as we go. Um, there's not much uh, single cast map mirror out at the moment at, at all. I think there's going to be a little bit more appearing soon. But there is actually um, there's still in cask that I mentioned to you earlier. 
um, the car share guys that started up, the, the owners of Circumstance Distillery in Bristol. Um, yeah, so still in cast limited, you'll be able to find on, I think still in cast.co.uk, uh, you'll be able to find a, an American Oak elegant recipe of ours there that will, um, you can buy a share in a cask basically, um, on, on blockchain as well. So, you know, nice and secure for everyone. And, um, yeah, I think that's being bottled in time for Christmas next year. Uh, I'll just post that into the comments in there. Yeah, great. There you go. So uh, that should be popping up in a moment, but um, a link to the things there. Um, people still dropping in the, the notes for this, which is awesome. Um, one of the questions I had for you, we talked a little bit earlier about this being cask strength um, almost. Uh, mm. At 45%, it's quite low. Um, what? How comes that so, gone down so much, and how long has it been in the cask for? Yeah, so that, that's that's just that's the humidity. That's like when the, the more humidity you've got in a warehouse or where a cask is going to be maturing, um, to, you know this is i like this 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 geeky stuff's a bit mean but yeah the uh look i don't often get to talk about it when we're doing our normal tasting stuff as well mm. so, it feels good, so thanks for asking um the more humidity you've got in the air you know to put it simply the the water that's within the cask because you've got water and alcohol in there um the water's not really got anywhere to escape to because there's so much water in the air um already um so alcohol basically finds its way out so so we lose abv a lot faster down in the mine um, the other option that you've got as standard from um, uh, for that you can find on our website as well. To mention, we do have these other little warehouses, these satellite warehouses knocking around. Um, is the forest warehouse, which is situated right next to the distillery itself. So up there, you'll have a higher ABV at the end than you would from the Bodas mine, um, but a, a slightly larger angel share in terms of bottles. Um, bottles sort of gone, I would say. So um, I think we, we save 54 bottles on average for the 30 litre casks by, by the time you come to bottom it. If you go for a pre-stored recipe, you could add, you know, two or three bottles onto that perhaps because yeah. it's going to be in there less time. But yeah, I mean, that's 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 basically it. So you, there are options that you can choose. I think I've I've gone in on a couple of casks with a, a club that I'm in and I've, I know I've seen one or two people that are actually involved in that as well in the comments. Um, both of ours have gone into the forest warehouse just so that we can get a bit more ABV out of it. But there's something really cool about having it in the mine as well i would say so if someone wanted to have something in the mine because it sounds cool it sounds fun then i think you know it's uh, i i hope that there's enough flavor in this at 45 percent mm. for people that, that tend to prefer their car strength whiskies to be in the 50s or above i hope there's enough flavor in this for people to get something out of it and enjoy it still but um if you are someone that would much rather see a higher abv on a bottle then the forest warehouse would be the choice uh, for you mm. yeah this is a good question um something that um i don't talk about much is my my day job and one of the things i am trained in is um explosive atmospheres um so obviously uh d distilleries in general um are explosive atmospheres and you have to have a lot of precautions in place but um he's asking in in the mine is it even greater uh i imagine it it probably is it probably smells great down there yeah so so john my colleague who took that video that we watched earlier uh, he's, he's told me uh, that when you get out of the car down at the bottom you basically just get this big uppercut of angel share if you walked in anyone that's been on uh, uh, warehouse tours in in, in scotland SA or anywhere else i guess you know walk into some dunnage warehouses and things in particular you can really you can you can almost immediately tell sometimes not every time for me maybe my nose isn't quite sensitive enough but um eventually um you, you'll be able to sort of to smell the aroma that lingers in the air however when you go down into the mine it's an immediate thing and there's no, there's no question that it's all about it. however i i couldn't answer that question about the explosive side i've not been asked it before i think i might defer to your um expertise there a bit and the likelihood perhaps but uh, hopefully not because that would be a crying shame if if it did happen oh yeah absolutely i mean um it's it's one of those things we have to be really careful about sparks um most people who have been to a distillery will know they say things like you're not allowed to use your phone um and that's not because they think that it will spark um but if you drop your phone and you somehow pierce the battery you'll start a fire that w won't get put out anytime soon um it's a it's it's a, a rough and long and very rare occurrence but they they i think they get away with it so they you know you're not allowed to take photos basically but <laughs> yeah, i wondered about that side of it on tours yeah how much how much it was just not one in corporate espionage or something going on <laughs> definitely definitely um how do you feel about uh moving on to the next one yeah let's do it lovely yeah I'm also being accosted by a fly here as well, so hopefully I'm not looking at that too much. Um, the shot, next one, then. Yeah. Get your, your judo chop out. I'll get the chopsticks. 
Um, the next one, uh, against box order. So hopefully everyone was here at the start and, and caught that. But the next one's going to be the X cognac slash elegant, uh, up at 46.4%. Um, so this one is a, a bit different, right? So it says prototype on here. I'm not sure what that means. Yeah. Um, prototype. So I asked about this as soon as you saw the pack and, uh, and, and it just, this is something that, um, we didn't have really many examples of that were finished that we had, we put five or six of these casks down and then when they started reaching three or four years we started you know one of them has gone into this this sample well the, this sample bottle that we've got here and gone around in the kits so um, it's a prototype because we don't know if we're going to carry on doing it um forever basically it's just but at the moment it is an option for people quite simply and uh, a bit more lacking in detail this one and so what i've been this one this one's just shy of four years old okay okay it's interesting because um as part of the channel, I'm kind of just about getting into cognac. I've covered like one cognac. Um, we've got uh, as close to a, a cognac expert in, in at the moment, which is um, Chris, uh, aka the last drop. So, it'd be interesting oh. to know what he thinks of this. Yeah, um, yeah. and influence it has on it because obviously it's uh, the. I mean, I, I don't know what the rules are in Sweden um, because obviously in Scotland you can't really like have liquid in the barrel still. I'm sure there definitely is liquid in these. Yeah, just a smidge. Um, yeah. But I, I know you guys probably um, can can get away with a little bit more. Um, so, do you know if if that's the case or not? If there's much cognac in here, or if it's just wood influence? I, I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you exactly how much. I know that I've I've heard Andrew to speak before a little bit about so we're, you know getting casks from here and casks from there, and I think they're they're tends to, to keep the cask wet in transit half the time as well. It's, it's not something that we've been seasoning ourselves as we do with our Oloroso casks for the most part, at least. Uh, those you know you can basically empty out because almost immediately they're going to be getting filled with with our new make again um but when we've got something that's being sent to us with with the liquid in it, having a little bit in there just to keep it um keep it you know moist i guess in transport and things as well make sure it doesn't dry out and then you've wasted a cask mm. um so there will be there will be a, a, a tiny bit in them i think anything that's excessive will probably get you know gotten rid of because you don't want to too much in there and, and over overdo things yeah but I imagine there would be there'd be a smidgen of it as there is with basically anyone that buys even Oloroso cast is a bit standard from you know uh, actual Oloroso bodegas and things as well. There'll always be a tiny bit. Absolutely. Most, most in the wood, yeah. Um, Chris is asking uh, where the cognac casks are from. I'm not sure if you'll know that. That's uh, probably a, 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 a random question. Um, yeah, and for, no, well, it's not too random. I think that's probably the question that I would ask if I was Chris as well. And I say good evening, Chris as well. Nice to hear from you. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know. Basically, is the is the short answer basically to that? Yeah, fair, fair. Well, I can't. I mean, I can say France and from the cognac region because it's you know it's brandy that's from cognac from the region of cognac in France. But uh, but exactly who it's come from, I, I, I'm not sure. I couldn't say. And um, my understanding as well with, with cognac, it tends to be a blend of different farms and, and distilleries and things. Anyway, but the person who's put that blend together and then put it in a cask, I, I couldn't tell you the name. Mm absolutely yeah so um i guess the main differences between this then is um because we've still got the elegant um uh, a recipe to start with uh and we've still got the the bonus mine it's just the fact that you're using uh wood from a different source and that's the only real difference between these two apart from maybe um the batch of whatever the whiskey is the yeah, there is, there's one other slight difference it isn't on the label mm -hmm. i've just noticed that they're 35 liters in size so these would yield you know, a, a considerably more no, so like at 60 or upwards, basically, um, bottles by the end of it. Give or take, I always like to say. Evening, Tom. Yeah. Tom is in. Um, so, yeah, do you think that the um, – because we mentioned before about the, the choices of casks, and this one isn't on there yet. Do you think that's going to be added later, maybe, if this is a success? So this this is something that you can opt for, but you have to come sort of direct to me, basically, or to, to, to your, your local friendly – Mac Mira representative, but uh, but yeah, if uh, uh, um, uh, reach out to me um, direct or, or uh, get hold of Vin, and Vin, can you send you our way if anyone is interested in the cognac cask or anything that isn't um, on the website now? And actually, I will. I might as well say now. I was going to sort of save it towards the end as well, but we're also anyone that's here tonight. If uh, anyone is interested in the reserve cask for yourself or as part of a group, we'll do a, a ten percent discount on them. But uh, but you'll need to come directly 
to us for it basically you won't be able to get it on the website itself so uh so again yeah either reach out to me or reach out to me through vin um website or, or email address for me is richard.mckeon at mcmira.com and uh i'm sure you can work out the spelling <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I think the, um, the the one thing I'm getting from this so far, um, two jams in, is that if uh, I want to get involved in this in any way, shape or form, is absolutely get in touch with you um, before going to the website. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Well, I, would say, I mean, go and have a look at the website, though, and get familiar and see, you know, because uh, we're going to go through, you know, quite a lot of detail tonight, but there's so much more that's available on there. So if you have a look at, um, I think if you've got the, the website to hand, you can pop it in the, the chat. Maybe just, journey. just going down underneath, but I will, um, I will copy yeah. and paste that into the, uh, into the, the um i was gonna say show notes then i've been listening to podcasts too much uh into the comments um but yeah have a look uh, um, have, have a look at the at the website as well and you'll see um there's a, a price calculator at the bottom where you can choose from some the different options that are listed on there now as well and it'll auto um calculate price um as far as as costings go as well I'll say that's it's uh, done in a two-part payment so you've got the first payment and the first upfront side of things and then the second payment at time of bottling. So that could be a year to three, four, five, six years down the line, um, which and all the second payment is, is duty, excise duty and the VAT on it. So the first payment, um, which is a bit dissimilar to other cash programs, not all, I'm sure, but most cash programs I've seen out there, there's an upfront payment, but then there's bottling, labeling, shipping sometimes insurance um, and all sorts of other costs that sort of added on as you go uh, with us everything in that upfront payment is all in one so basically what, what you pay initially is all you're going to pay until you have to pay the excise at the other end which we can't tell you exactly what it'll be until we get there but generally speaking I think it's about 480 pounds on average for it because they you know between sort of 43 to 50 percent ABV give or take it'll be around about that yeah absolutely so it'll be basically like once you've paid your first amount then you just start saving a few quid each month and five years yeah. later you put yourself 50 bottles of uh of whiskey give or take <laughs> indeed and if you're anything like me and you've got to do it in a group of friends then uh it's even easier i think as well because i've got um uh, uh, two as i mentioned earlier on the reserve casting and i put already cast with a bunch of uh bunch of lunatics in the whiskey circus as well before and uh, definitely helps taking the edge off when you've got a big group of you yeah, it's um I actually I've got a bottle of um someone who did a, one of those ready casks. It's a Beach Hut man um sent me a bottle of his. Um and it's uh I like, I never never really considered it before and um he's just done it on his own. So that that poor poor bloke has got like 50 bottles uh, of his own whiskey sitting in his house. Why not? Um I think it's a, I think it's a great idea. Something that I definitely need to look at eventually without a doubt. Mm. Um I'm just chucking up the notes here. Um for me again, I think um as I mentioned before, I, I get that kind of house style coming through those bananas, those tropical notes, but it's definitely a grapey vibe to it. It would um, confuse yeah. the hell out of me if uh, if it was on a blind tasting. I think this is this is the f and or what was at least initially the first cognac cask whiskey that I'd ever tried. Um, I think if so, someone could pop in the comments any other cognac casks that they might have tried as well. I'm sure I've tried one more because I think somebody I was doing a sort of consultation with sent me a sample of something. Whether or not it was technically whiskey or not, or I'm not sure now. I'm trying to think, but it's definitely. I'm sure I've seen at least one or two other cognac cask whiskies available like out on the market now by the bottle. Yeah, fair enough. To be fair, I can't think of anything off the top of my head either. Um, they, they, they definitely exist, um, but they they're not as, uh, as 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 popular as um. I should um, popular is the wrong word, but they're not as uh around i guess so as available as most people think that they should be maybe but um i certainly think they should have more stuff like this going on i'm looking for people to destabilize what we know about whiskey um which is going round about which is exactly why i like you guys because you're not okay. afraid to just do like whatever and especially angela she's like a carte blanche to just basically make wacky stuff and sometimes it sticks and sometimes it doesn't and you just move on <laughs> Yeah, no, it, um, before you know, I said I, I found Matt Mir in 2018. Mm. I joined the Somerton Club. Um, shout out to the Somerton Club uh, members um, a, a few short months later. And then um, I think it's September 2019, so a few months before I joined, um, Matt Mir did uh, a whiskey with Microsoft, an AI created whiskey where you know the an AI machine that Microsoft had put together with with four kind and uh, come up with a load of recipes and um angela sort of then you know the, the human entered and sort of whistled those down and, and had a whiskey at the end of it but when i saw that like you were saying that that sort of disrupting 
the market it feels like a sort of quite a, you know um a, a young person's term that disruption thing i guess these days but but that is exactly like what got me into matt mirror in a in a big way i was quite a fan before and sort of i'd be, I had a bottle or two but then when the ai came out i loved it because yeah. um I'm, you know, if you look at the, the shelves behind me, most of these are sort of our, our traditional heritage brands, and that's, you know, I, I can't get enough of, of that side of it and the human element, the history and things that's involved with whiskey, communities that are built up over the centuries around it and everything. But when this AI whiskey came out, I just thought, I just, I've never seen anyone else do anything like it, um, and it just, it made me, I don't know, sort of, I found it very endearing towards like towards the brand towards Matt Mirror before joining so actually getting a job with them like after feeling all of that felt great and still still does but yeah so the cognac casting and then the green tea cast we've spoken about and then um there's one or two other things sort of bubbling in the mix as well that might be a bit left field and out there as well that uh, keep your eyes peeled for in the future I'd say yeah absolutely yeah absolutely yeah I, I've always said about that uh, the, the grand tea I um saw it first at a show and uh, I sort of, I'll go and check out my mirror, of course, I'll check out my mirror. And, and someone told me, green tea, I was like, okay, all right, yeah, I'll give it a go. And yeah, and uh, yeah, we all know that, that ended up being my uh, whiskey of the year for 2020. Um, wow. It's absolutely fabulous. And I've still got a, a bottle of that. Um, it's open again now, but I've, I, it is hidden so that I don't uh, drink it too quickly. <laughs> Um, I, I spotted one of the comments come in. I think I've, I've lost it now, but um, but from Carl Lucas who said, uh, "Good evening, Carl." As well, I would have been interested in a cognac cast, but couldn't drink another fifty bottles. That's it. <laughs> um, yeah, Carl, Carl, I'm sure because he's, he's put that there. I'm, I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying, but he's the first person I ever sold a cast to last year, and um, and I'm, I'm highlighting his comment now as a sort of uh, as a segue to sort of set myself up for another part of like the reserve cast program, and that is that we do annual samples as well uh -huh. so you design all the whiskey you choose spirit warehouse cask and then uh once a year we'll send samples across so i think it's 100 mil basically can get taken out each year and we send it over so i've got um a, a, a sort of a, a mid well not even a midway point a one year point um meeting to have with carl just to have a little update and see how things are going um on his whiskey as well that's part of so you can either have that just you can have the 100 mil sent to you so you can drink it all yourself and uh, all with friends and see what you think and eventually when it is legally whiskey decide when you think it's time for bottling and you can ask us for our advice and help along the way with that as well um but in carl's case and uh, and, and a few others as well um you know 50 mils come to me so thanks for that carl and uh, 50 to him so that we can have a drink together and uh and sort of and and check its progress along the way as well so that's another part that comes inclusive um in that upfront cost as well that's covered in that awesome awesome so uh i've, I've been chucking up some comments as we've been going so people seem to be really enjoying this um we'll we'll sort of go through favorites a bit later but if um as we go along if if you've kind of placed in this above the previous or before then do let us know and we'll we'll, we'll chuck it up and uh have a talk and i was just looking for a comment um as well uh because there was a question earlier but as things oh there we go got it whiskey shorts um he's, he's just asking uh, probably a bit off topic but how did the little brown dog came about um that was a lovely drop he says yeah that's that's my counterpart mickey mickey plumber in the north um he, he looks after everything north of nottingham for us and uh i think he just he reached out to little brown dog and uh and i think he just you know, called him up and tried to flog him a cask and they found one that they liked and uh I'll put it in a bottle quite as simply as as that basically uh, did you try that one finn no actually i haven't tried that yeah it is um it's exceptional i think i mentioned earlier so this is it's a little brown dog and they've they're mm. brilliant uh, the little brown hund i think we can work out what that means in, in swedish as well um i mentioned earlier that the american oak um is one of my favorite like cast types for our spirit to go in i think it just works incredibly well in there and that is yeah that is an american oak cask same as the stilling cask car share guys that I mentioned earlier and um it is it is beautiful it absolutely sings so yeah um i mentioned that um about oh i asked actually if anyone knew of any cognac cast whiskies tom lindsay put in the comments earlier um he's got a, a brooklyn addy it sounds like cognac car so there's there's at least one there. yeah a bunch came up um we had uh, the shivers regal 25 oh, um using my school <laughs> um stuff there uh, shivers and glenn livet have one uh okay. glenn Cadham. that's the one i was thinking of because i tried that fairly recently nice. um and then uh, uh, there's a lambay as well so uh, that's pretty awesome excuse me um yeah so uh let's uh move on to the next one shall we 
Um, Do it. Shoot this off. <laughs> chin chin. Uh, I'm going to leave some um, something I like to do with these tastings is leave a little bit behind so that I can come back to them later. But um, you're all right. You've probably got plenty of these. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually on my yeah. I've I've had to save a little bit in the bottle for them because I've uh, used these ones before. Yeah. I think um, Mick O'Connell was waiting for us because he's uh, he's already put his uh, his notes down for this. So get on with it. But um, something I really like about this one here, I don't talk about colour often enough on the channel, is um, immediately this has such a, a, a much more rose gold colour to it than the other ones do. Yeah. I think I don't talk about colour too much these days either, Vin. I was doing a, um, a tasting with, well, actually with, with, with a bunch of uh, friends, people who sort of not, um, not long been into whiskey, um, probably within the last sort of two or three weeks. And I was doing like, a, this is how you might assess something. This is how you sort of start. And then uh, I don't know what it was, but I went back, you know, a year or two ago in my mind, it must have been like, oh, should we look at the colour? And then I thought, I haven't talked about colour in so long. I think because um, I, you've got, you know, the, the, when colouring can be added to things and I've got, you know, I've got bottles back behind me that does have added colouring in and nothing sort of too wrong with it. But there's a purist in me somewhere that likes it when it's natural and stuff. So I'll just stop putting a great deal of stock in colour but when something is has a nice colour like this and it is natural, I can't help but get excited about it, um, whether it's this or, or anything else that's about it. There's something nice about it. I've been on a bit of a refill ex-bourbon binge for a number of months, though, so, you know, getting uh, getting down to what the, the sort of spirit character of a distillery is, sort of, is, is like and you get a better representation, of course, in a cast that's a bit less active. However there's something deep down in me that does respond very positively to a nice rich color like that. And I think from port, that's what you'd hope to see from a port cask, especially a single cask port. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of port as a, as a drink itself, but um, when it's interacting with a whiskey like this, um, absolutely fabulous. Yeah. Cause exactly like you say, I mean, I'm, I'm not too bothered about, um, about color at all. Um, I just like to know, um, I, I would much rather it be law to have it written on, on the thing that it was added color just to, just to take anything away from it because it, it, to me, it's neither hitting it, but you know, they say that it doesn't affect the flavor and some people think it does. I mean, I don't think it does really, because it really is the tiny, tiny amounts that goes into it. But, yeah. um, I think you yeah. have to be you have to have an incredibly sensitive palate to to notice. So I've I've, I've read a, a study here or there, or I might be generous with the term study, but people that have you know done like some side by sides with some things and you know various bloggers and things to see if they can notice. And for the for the general consensus from what I've seen amongst the small number, admittedly that I've looked at, um, not really not really any any major discernible difference between it. However, there's something just it's nicer knowing that it's natural. I think basically again you know i've got whiskies all, you know behind me that do have some coloring in but i'd much prefer it when i know it's a natural thing i don't know what it is but absolutely definitely. yeah people are just um still going i mean I, i'm probably a little bit behind on the comments here but um the, the people just going on about the color is just amazing um and he's asking what sort of port is used I don't, I don't know if you know that at all yeah so um if if anyone's tried and let us know uh, what you think um if you have of, of winter soul which is one of our our seasonal releases from 2019 i think it must have been perhaps late 2018 um that's something that we did in partnership with uh um i hope i'm pronouncing this correctly as well i have enough trouble with the swedish one sometimes as well but uh quinta or quinta dol volado so they're a 300 350 year old port producer in the is the duro valley in the north of portugal basically so that's who we work with on on vintersol and that's who we've we get our port from for these casks as well so yeah quinta quinta do valado quinta do valado um there if you, if you give that 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 roughly what i've said a quick google i'm sure that google will correct and, and instantly say, did you mean so and so and then that's basically the one if it looks right yeah Absolutely. Uh, people have got a lot of questions about this one, actually. Uh, how much time is this spent in port casks is a good one. Yeah, so this, so, right, so this is actually, I mentioned the pre-stored spirit earlier. So there's five different spirits to choose from. Elegant, smoky, extra smoky, and then the two pre-stored. So pre-stored, elegant, pre-stored, smoky. Pre-stored means four years in a 200-litre ex-bourbon first, okay. first first fill 200 liter x bourbon and then you put that into the the, the cask itself so i think the dates that i've got here and uh, I've, I've never got used to this no matter how much i look at it because sweden do their dates backwards um 
it the cask was filled with that four-year-old whiskey um on the 12th of july 2018 and then um it was bottled on the 25th of march 2020 so what's that the better part of 18 months mm-hmm Give or take, yeah. So yeah, about eighteen months in in this cask. Fair play. So, I think that's um, it's been that's more than enough as well. It's only a small cask as well, really, isn't it? So the influence is going to be quick. Yeah. So that's it. So for for anyone that that um, I know, most of the people, the names I've seen, the people that definitely know this already. But just in case um, that there isn't anyone, the smaller the cask you have, um, the 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 faster the development, or um, you know, I'd say development. I, I'm careful not to use the word sort of aging. Mm. because of, you know that's i think a, maybe a s- slightly different thing although they are the same thing it's, but yeah it's a relative term though isn't it aging yeah yeah so i think so i'm so what i'll say is you get a, a faster development a faster maturation with a smaller cast because you've got a greater surface area to liquid area ratio basically and uh, obviously the inverse is is the same if you have a larger cask it takes a bit longer to do things so with 30 that's why um the elegant bourbon cast that we had to begin with six years old so generally speaking, the sweet spot for elegant bourbon casks of ours with 30 litre size is a five, five years to six years. Um, some of them are, are ready and beautiful at about four that I've tried, but we say about five years usually for those. Um, but then if you put a pre-stored recipe into that, that would be ready sort of a year to 18 months, perhaps. Maybe, maybe, maybe slightly longer, but a year to 18 months. Um, but then some of the more active casks, you know, such as um, Swedish oak, for example, um you know virgin anything that's virgin oak uh, be it american or, or swedish but in particular swedish oak just because of how many how much tannic property it has mm. um yeah tw- 12 months for the pre-stored and and you're done so you could have your own design cask you know sort of a, a year down the line um but then maybe they maybe don't want that i think some groups for example so the clubs that i'm in we've got one that's pre-stored and one that isn't so that we've got a couple that are sort of binding us together as a group for you know for a few years as well as one that we can have a bit faster as well so we sort of cover both bases with it um but yeah so this one yeah pre-stored elegant so this is something yeah four years in the 200 litre x bourbon and then 18 months in the pot and uh have i missed any other questions as i've been going on with that uh no i don't think there's any have been any specific questions I, well i certainly haven't seen them so again if i've missed your question and i'm already highlighting comments that have, that have gone past please do put it again and uh and at me um the uh, the atting system on StreamYard isn't so great, um, which is why I'm probably looking around all over the place while I'm dual screening. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, this is this is super interesting. I agree with everything everyone's been saying. People are talking about um, like strawberries and blackberries and warm Ribena and things like that, which is uh, all great stuff. I agree. Yeah, that's that, and and the cognac as well. I was interested to see just to quickly go back to the the cognac notes that we, we had come up. Um, that I think a lot of the notes that were, I saw coming in the comments down the side, as well as the ones you were showing, definitely seemed to me as though like the cognac, like was present there, like the influence of it, and some of the notes that you just mentioned there and highlighted as well. The port is definitely doing its job, and it's definitely there. It's definitely you know in the game, in the mix with it. So um, yeah, whiskey with Molly is asking. Um, interested to know if you've had any experimental casks that um, didn't come out as expected. I'm, I'm not sure if they'd make it to you if they didn't, but. Yeah, no. Do you know what I I I feel like um I feel like I've seen like Angela answer that question before, and I'm trying to think if 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 she gave an answer or dodged it, or you know, <laughs> there um, must be there absolutely must be. She must be chucking it in all sorts of weird casts and just like three years later, just being like, nope, that was a bad idea. There will be yeah, because I, I think um I, I would say that our our spirit, like the elegant recipe in particular, is is relatively malleable well i've seen it work well in a number of different so many different casts that it does a good job in um i would i would hazard a sort of an educated guess that some of the casts that didn't work are perhaps things that that have been left in for too long at one point you know she's taken a sample here and a sample there and then the experiment fails when she realizes that it's sort of become overcooked but by that point Mm -hmm. i guess it wouldn't have failed because she might have found the sweet spot along the way. Um, I don't think any, there's been no cask types specifically mentioned to me that I, cause I, I, and I would be happy to share it if I could, well, if I could remember, or if I had been told, uh, but I think that's it uh, but on the, um, on the opposite side. So if, if, did you try the, the apple bloom, the Calvados cask that we had? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, so apple bloom. So we got our Calvados cask from Christian Druen, um, quite a prominent Calvados, producer and, and that's actually on the on the cognac 
side, you know, Calvados being Calvados, of course, but it's, you know, apple wine that's being distilled the way that cognac is basically you know, wine from cognac that's being distilled. Um, but the, the apple bloom, um, what Angela usually does when she's experimenting with new casks is she gets, um, buys, buys the whatever liquid it is from somewhere else, puts it into some 30 litre, usually sort of second fill X bourbon casks. So there's more influence from that liquid in there, um, leaves it there to season and then puts some spirit in there for six months and then sees what it's like after six months. Because as I mentioned earlier, you get a faster development of things. So she has a good idea about what direction it's going in after quite a short amount of time that it's been in there. Um, but with the Calvados one, she didn't even bother with that because she was so confident, um, so confident that it was a match made in heaven, to use her words, um, that she just she sat that six months off of experimenting with it and just put our whiskey immediately into these bigger casks because she was just so confident that it would work out well. And Apple Bloom, I think, has probably been one of the most successful seasonal whiskies that we've had. And that was done purely based on, on her gut feeling that it would do well. And um, yeah, and it did commercially very well for us. Uh, that's why she's the the Swedish nose, right? That's it. Yeah. Chief nose officer. That's Chief it. Nose officer. Um, Jack's asking if there's a definition for Swedish whiskey. I don't think there is right now, apart from maybe it has to be made in Sweden. No, so I don't think there's even that. So I think I think if we wanted to, you know, we could um, mature our whiskey basically anywhere. Um, and then so I think there's 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 no there's no proper designation for things at the moment. Well, I think that's actually, you know, we've got I mentioned we've got a couple of warehouses in um, in Germany, mm. um, you know, so we we send a cask and spirit brand new to Germany because we've got a big market there. There's a lot of people, there are a lot of Mac Mira fans there. Um, and then it mature there. So really, there isn't a definition for it. Um, because we are single malt, we do adhere, and because Sweden is obviously still in um, the EU, we do adhere to the European rules of what single malt is. So, you know, um, uh, pot still, batch distillation, three years in wood, um, and, and just your three ingredients going into it, being your water, barley, and uh, yeast. So we follow the single malt rules, 100%. Um, but in terms of, of what Swedish whiskey is, there's no clear like rule for it i think what we did you know at the very beginning was try and um set a precedent for what swedish whiskey could be and you know i, I mentioned that um and you know we'll talk a bit more on the smoky one that mm. we malt and smoke all of our own barley for our peated recipe rather than send in from it abroad because they wanted everything to be swedish from the start so uh, so we do we we try and make sure we i don't know it's um probably not people use this in the wrong way half the times but you know we police ourselves with what Swedish is to us, but that that Swedish identity, is such an important cornerstone of who Matt Mira are and what they wanted from the beginning, the founders, that we make sure that it is, you know, it's kept Swedish basically. Yeah. So as far as when it comes to us and and, and, and I'm sure the others as well, because there's some great other distilleries in Sweden now, um, it's definitely kept Swedish. It's, it's, it's as Swedish as it can possibly be. Absolutely, yeah. And as uh, Toby's just saying here, um, Swedish whiskey is only like two, a couple of decades old and that sort of thing. I mean, even Japanese whiskey has only just got its um, legislation coming into play now. And that's still, you know, like 60, 70 years old. I mean, probably more. I'm getting my dates wrong. But I think I think I think, I think uh, was it like 1922, something 1923 or, or maybe, maybe the later 20s, something around about there. I think they, they started distilling uh, well, whiskey, at least. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll only so get maybe in uh, 80 years time or so the Swedish whiskey will be getting its legislation <laughs> yeah maybe maybe it will I know there's been uh, um uh, not to digress too far but the English distilleries there's been meetings with them over the last well I'm not sure how long but at least the last year or so trying to work out what English whiskey should be and how to sort of clearly mm. define things problem with um defining things or too heavily is you can stifle some innovation because people aren't able to then experiment a bit more there. And when you've got some new distilleries coming through and wanting to do things their own way, too many regulations in place or, or things that will stop them from doing stuff can be a bit of a hindrance. But then also it's nice to have some things in place and some standards in place mm -hmm. so that people in the consumer know exactly what they can get and that they aren't having the wall pulled over their eyes as well. So there's such a difficult balancing act to do. Um, and I've not heard much coming out of Sweden about that basically at the moment so um so we'll see no no exactly and uh as, as uh, you guys are doing be the change you want to see right so if you if you be if you are the gold standard then you don't need to worry about it too much because anyone who tries to release some naff will, will just be lost yeah well i can't impress on anyone enough just how seriously they take that that mm. 
Swedishness side of it, basically. They really, really do. It's um it's incredibly important to to everyone over there that sort of that shapes who McNeera are and, and and how we operate. So um so yeah, so I think when um I'm sure as I said, it'd be the same with the other guys over there as well. I, I certainly hope so and I expect it will be. But with us, like, we couldn't possibly be more Swedish, basically, in terms of what we're making. Um, so yeah, before we move on to the next one, then um, we mentioned earlier about the different um, different kinds of places that you can mature in, and we've seen the video of the the bonus mine, and we've got one for the forest one as well. Do you want to talk us through the differences in the forest one? And I'll get this. Yeah, cool. There you go. So I think it's this forest. is this is the video of uh, of my colleague John. Um, eventually, he'll be filling the cask, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, we've got one of that. We can, uh, okay. Oh, so this is just the forest warehouse itself, then. Yeah. Um, so this is the entrance of the sort of the bond layer forest warehouse. It's basically built under this big sort of grass and earth embankment just to keep it out um, of that sort of that bitter Swedish cold, basically. So the forest warehouse is situated right next to the distillery itself in Macmira Village. I should have mentioned perhaps at the top for anyone that's not familiar with with Macmira, we're um, based about an, an hour north of Stockholm on the the east coast of Sweden. And uh, Macmira isn't just our founders trying to sound as Scottish as they could. As I said, we're as you know as Swedish as it comes. Macmira is actually um, a place, and um, and yeah, now we're in the we've created the Macmira village basically as well, or our our, our sort of version of it. And the forest warehouse, as we see here, um, that's the front of it. Um, that's where you can come and fill your casks and things as well. Um, yeah, that's where you can have some of your reserve casks placed. And this is John. This is the, the gentleman, my colleague, who uh, who filmed the, the video going down into the mine. And I expect the previous one as well. This is him, I think, a couple of years ago now when he bought his own cask um, coming over to fill it. So you have this sort of this petrol pump nozzle, as you can see him there. Um, fill it all the way to the top. You see he's, uh, he's gone right to the brim, as you can see there, with the splash over the top. And uh, I think if you're lucky and sober enough, they might let you use this little forklift as well to put it up um, on the rack. And you can see on one or two, well, on the cask on the bottom right, there's a brass plaque there, um, which John will eventually have on his cask as well. Well, he, he will by this point now. But that brass plaque you can have with your you know, name on. And um, although it's obviously a bit difficult to get over to Sweden now to go and fill things. Oh, hello, John. Hello, John. Good evening. Um, he, he, that's his favourite video, I'm sure. Um, lots of lovely memories there. But uh, if you go over um, to Sweden when things are, you know, permissible, um, you're able to go and fill that that cast and then spend a day at the distillery. And we do all sorts of different cask owner events as well there. And that's actually something that um, I like to emphasise a little bit as well, that it's not just by the cask and then you get this sort of annual meeting where you have a review and, and we can see how sort of things are going. There is because of how big a part the cast program is for us as a company, um, there's a huge impetus put on when making the cask experience, like a, a fun one and uh, you build a network and they, they do again, if you can get to Sweden for this and I will touch on, on what we do in the UK as well, but everybody is welcome as you're part of the cask owner club then to go to Sweden. They do big like barbecue events and like, I don't want to call them networking events, but effectively that's what they are because you have lots of other cask owners come along and, quite a, a cultural thing in Sweden to do is to bring a, a number of bottles from your cask along with you and then end up swapping them with other people while you're there as well. Because if you've got 50 of the same cask, you know, that's very great, of course. And, you know, if, if, if you love that whiskey, you know, you, you're, you couldn't be luckier. But, you know, if you can spare half a dozen or more bottles, bring them along to these events, swap them with other people, and then you can try other things if you go. And stuff that we do in the UK um last year we weren't able to do it of course we're not being able to meet up but we do have um events as well in the uk one for the north one for the south where we meet up and we'll do a cask owner event in the uk which is obviously a lot easier for people to get to but you can do both you can come over and, and go and have a look and uh you can visit your cask if it's in the forest warehouse you can go read it a poem sing it a song you know put it on the back or, or whatever you might want to do as well um but there's there's a huge focus on making the experience um, making the experience a fun one, I guess, for mm. want of a, a more dramatic word, but just something that an enjoyable thing that you can do and, and be part of something bigger. Um, whiskey, before we move on, then, Whiskey and Molly's asking, oh, I'm here looking at the uh, NFT crypto market. Um, obviously, that's probably a bit above your pay grade, but um, it's an interesting <laughs> subject, that's for sure. Is that is, is Whiskey and Molly trying to um, buy one with, with crypto, basically? Is that what it sounds like to me? But, yeah. 
Um, I, I couldn't answer that, mate. I, I don't know. I don't want to make him work on a on a day off. But John, if John is still in the comments, you might fire something back to you. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's something that we could always come back to you on whiskey and money. I think uh, you and I have become acquainted already, so I'm sure we can let you know. And uh, yeah, one more question then before we move on to the last one. I'm sure everyone's itching for it. Um, yeah. But uh, Jag's asking, as uh, well as experimenting with casks and locations, are they experimenting with um, barley and combination of a three? So the barley we use, it's the same barley for us, basically. Well, it's the same. It's the barley. Um, and we use tipple, which is a brewer's barley. So it's a two row brewer's barley. Um, that is that is that's 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 the barley for us that's basically the, the sweet spots where there's there's enough property and flavor in there as well as being the right amount of yield for us i think it's about 40 tons or so every two or three weeks that we'll go through awesome awesome well i think um let's get on to the last one then um we're, we're doing um, great for time to be fair but um this is something that i have been really looking forward to because i'm a huge fan of your uh, smoky recipe and anything that's got a bit of smoke in it um, tends to be my favourite of a uh, McMira tasting, um, unless the grown tea's in there, of course. But um, this one's uh, an entirely different recipe right from the start. Yeah, this is, and this is uh, this is this is my favourite one. Let me just say as well, I'm not yeah, uh, we're allowed to have favourites because I don't make it, so uh, <laughs> I can say. Yeah. So I mentioned you know, a smoky for me, generally speaking, although. I think the vast majority of the whiskey I've got behind me is unpeated. If somebody, a desert island dram, is it peated or unpeated? It's peated for me. Yeah. Even though that's probably about 15% of what I've got on the shelf. And then, as I've mentioned a few times, for me, our spirit in American oak in particular, just it works so incredibly well. So this, so our smoky recipe in this cask, this is this is the magic formula for me. Um, so this our smoky recipe, our smoky spirit, um, as I've already said, you know, we malt and peat all of our own barley for this. And that is simply because Viking malting, the maltsters that we use sort of near Gothenburg on the West Coast, don't, didn't peat anything. I think they still don't now. So, you know, so they, they malt lots of barley for different uses and things, of course, you know, uh, beer or wherever it might be going. Um, but nothing being smoked. So rather than import it from elsewhere, the owners built or the founders built uh, but almost like well, they, they built a tiny little like malt bin um which is just like uh, like you might see see them in a, a garden or something like you know six or eight feet long big long lid on the top barley inside to be malted and then a, a, almost like a dog kennel duck house looking smoker as well for the first few years um and then progressed up to where we do now i think it's about 80 tons or so a year so a small amount of uh, of malting and, and uh peating of our own barley um because you know costs being quite high for doing that ourselves i think we're one of fewer than i think 10 or 12 distilleries in the world that peat that malt and peat their own barley on site um i think kilhome and bowmore balvenie do a small amount in scotland and i'm sure there's one or two others knocking around in scotland as well um but yeah so we are one of fewer than a dozen in the world that do it it gets done in this uh, this smoking this this purpose built smokehouse that we've got next to the distillery. Goes on a conveyor into a big, uh, basically a shipping container. Well, I say basically, it is literally that. Our uh, our founders were engineers, and if it works, it works. It doesn't have to be this this incredibly beautiful um, setup that you might see in in space side with big pagoda roofs and things knocking around. Um, and we yeah we peat our barley. I think it's between sort of sixty to sixty five ppm. I usually sort of fall on the sixty three ppm mark but that that high ppm doesn't translate into this final product into this whiskey so what we're effectively doing is making an incredibly concentrated smoke in a in our barley and then we take a portion of that and mix it with our unpeated barley um unpeated malted barley i should say as well to then go through and make our our um our peated spirit at the end our peated new make spirit and it's about 23 percent of that of that run will be from peated barley that we make so we take it up to a very high ppm so that we can use a small amount of it in there which is sort of quite um i think in, in a simple way quite an innovative thing to do you know quite um you know it's a, a a clever workaround basically so that we can make sure that we keep everything swedish as i said because mm -hmm. that's so important um but then also get a smoky whiskey at the end because people in sweden love smoky whiskey they absolutely love it. So when when the founder started, they knew that they needed to make peated spirit as well. They couldn't get away with just having it unpeated. So, yeah, I mean that's that basically that's that's probably the quickest I think I've ever described our peating process and after doing it um, ourselves. But happy to field any comments or any questions. Sorry um, about that. Anyone that wants anything um, expanded on. 
Awesome. Yeah. Um, a quick thank you to uh, Whiskey with Molly for becoming a um, a member of the channel. So thanks very much. Um, he can now use uh, my really rubbish custom emojis that I made. So um, uh, please do use and abuse them. I think you, I don't know if that'll even come up in here. No. So they're so special they won't even come up on the uh, on the comments. But uh, <laughs> thanks very much. much. If they are, you have to pay to be able to see them as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah awesome uh jag's asking um uh, what was the ppm level again yeah so uh, let's, let's say 63 ppm basically but uh, but again that is you know that won't end up in this class because we use you know uh i think 63 ppm and then about 23 percent give or take a percent or two will go into um into the, the the mash bill which is not something you hear often when talking about single malt because you don't need a mash bill when it's all malted barley um, unless I suppose you're somebody that's using a couple of different types of barley in one and then of course you would but yeah so um, yeah 23 percent roughly and then the extra smoke that I mentioned is the, the third base spirit type that you can choose with the reserve casks mm -hmm. extra smoke is basically just double the amount of smoke that's in there as well yeah. that's awesome yeah I mean um, if, if I was going to be doing this that's what I'd be looking at <laughs> so give me the weirdest cask you can and give me the double smoke <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um uh, to talk about the rum cast again so that that, that we've got that are maturing uh, and and are just started now on this this barge in paris um which you can go over and go and you know sample your whiskey and things over there and excuse for a getaway there oh that's it yeah so barge 166 um on the river i um, operated by maison ferrand the big um well massive uh, drinks company but it's plantation rum in particular who we're working with um there um rum rum and a rum casks and peated whiskey is not something I'd ever, I'd ever tried before until mm. about two or three weeks ago. And then I was sat with um, with a very good uh, customer of ours, friend of the brand, uh, someone I've enjoyed getting to know very much over the last couple of years. And I was talking to him about this and, I, and, and he loves his peated whiskey and he loves McNeera's peated whiskey. And I said, oh, I've never tried a peated rum cask. So I couldn't tell you how it would be. And he went, oh. In the shop, I've got uh, a smokehead rum, a uh, smokehead rum cask. So if we've seen smokehead whiskeys knocking around, they've got a rum, a, a, a smoky rum cask now, and it is absolutely fantastic. So um, you know, rum and American oak for me are two of the, the best types of casks that our spirit can go into. I think well, that 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 sweetness and things that's present there, without being sort of too sickly sweet, too sort of like confectionery, sugary sweet. Um, just seems to work so well with us. So if anyone, and as yourself, Finn, as you've said, you know, likes a, a, is thinking about a smoky whiskey, but has never tried a smoky rum cast whiskey mm. before, um, but it is something that I've definitely got an interest in myself now, and I'm sort of trying to round up a little bit of interest amongst friends to try and uh, get involved uh, with that. But uh, anyone that wanted to try that before, or try something that might be similar, because you know, let's face it, it's a completely different, you know whiskey and, and and the spirit of things but um smokehead rum give that a go give that a try and see what you think about a smoky rum cask i thought it was fantastic so mm. yeah i see yeah. uh, andy I, I would agree with andy there as well i think it's much softer than um than you might think of 55.2 uh it, it it does do well with a little drop of water as well not because it needs it but i think if you want to experiment a bit and add a drop of water or two to this just to see sort of you know open it up and see where it goes um i enjoy a drop of water or two with mine Hmm. Talking about the differences in this, um, we've seen most of these are around the 30 litre. This one's a 200 litre. Yeah. So, yeah. So this isn't that. So um, you can't. We do obviously have 30 litre American oak casks, as I said. This one's 200 litre. I think because I mentioned are the primary reserve casks on primary sort of cask programs that we have, I should say, actually are 30 litre casks. That's just what our, our founders sort of started doing from you know, from 2002 onwards. Um, but we also sell 200 litre casks, um, there's a, 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 quite a decent number of them as well in, in recent months. Um, so anyone that thinks that 30 litre and five, you know, 54 bottles or something isn't going to be enough for them and fancies having, you know, uh, 350 50 centilitre bottles, um, so call it, you know, upwards 200, 370 centilitres worth. Uh, maybe a 200 litre cask is for you, maybe you've got too much money. <laughs> or maybe you've got just the right amount of money and this is what you want to spend it on. But yeah, I think so they've included a 200 litre in here because we do have a 200 litre that reserve cask program, basically, where you can you know choose something from the outset. But um might be a bit too much. I think we're looking here sort of like the up, up uh, give or, between anywhere. I think for an American oak one, you're looking anywhere between sort of, well, maybe about 10 grand or so. 
But again, everything in that is included. So I think because you can find 200 litre casks much cheaper than that elsewhere, but then you've got bottling, insurance, warehousing, yeah. delivery, and everything that's all these hidden costs that come in um, at the end. So with us, all the casks that we sell, everything's rolled in to that first price. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's the, that's the key thing to impress, isn't it? It's um, Although uh, when you look at cask ownership, um, all you're really doing um, in terms of the uh, the normal, let's say, um, programs that I've seen is like um, you might spend a grand or two owning a cask, um, but that's literally you're just paying them to own that cask immediately. The, all the all the other costs that that come into it down the line. Sometimes you even have to pay to have it sampled for you, yeah. um, which is shocking. But the, like the only reason you have to split cost is because you genuinely don't know what the the excise and VAT is going to be on the back end. So that, yes, you, you have to charge that later. So so we we, we tell so that people know what's going into it too dark. You know we we do say I think on our website if people go and have a look and just to give it a, a quick plug again to go and have a look at it but macmira.com and you can look at the reserve cask um information there and you'll see there's a little price calculator at the bottom as well where you can mm. see play around with the different recipes and casks um yeah have a look at that. and i think at the bottom we've got you know with a little asterisk next to it um uh, excise duty and vat is a, uh, approximately 480 pounds or something like that when, when it, at the time of bottling and that is you know again approximately i mentioned the little asterisk that's there just to cover myself there but um <laughs> we, we do based on on our experience selling them before that is that's like the medium basically that's sort mm. of that's, that's roughly where where it would be um but the fact everything's covered in one as you've said because i've looked at some cars before as well and thought oh my god that is that's a tidy price mm-hmm. um and then yeah and then it does i mean it, it'd still be worth it at the end i'm sure if you found something that's good and you found something that you like but um i think the fact that we do stuff up front for me i think is better for the consumer for me better for the customer for sure absolutely that's work involved um i, I think i uh, it's, it disappeared off the highlights now but um thanks to to neil uh whiskey trials for the uh, super chat there thanks very much dude very much appreciated and we've got another channel member as well um from yash so thank you very much for supporting the channel my friend um uh, all, all good things. Um, uh, you know, anyone who wants to help is uh, muchly appreciated. Obviously, just your eyeballs is um, all we're after. Uh, generally speaking, um, likes and stuff always help. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for supporting the channel. Um, we've got lots of um, tasty notes coming up. Uh, yeah. People are, are really liking this. I actually haven't seen anybody who doesn't like it yet. If there's anyone who's um, finding this a bit distasteful, please do please do shout out because we like to hear both sides of the fence. Um, yeah. But yeah, people are uh, really enjoying this. In fact, I think I highlighted a comment earlier. My, a buddy of mine who runs a barbecue channel um, called uh, Skinny Boy Barbecue, um, nice. he doesn't 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 like his um, smoky whiskey, and I just sort of said, "No, that's you, know, you might think you don't, but stick with me, kid. We'll sort you right out." Um, and this is uh, right up his street, he reckons. Oh, nice. Oh, good. Yeah, glad to hear. So we um, we hear that quite often with our, our Spence Rook from our core range our smoky expression from our core range as well people that uh, when we do our core range tastings that we do uh, well monthly ones so if you have a look at macmira.co.uk and see when the next one's due and, and get a pack of things um we hear i would i would say there's at least one person every month that we do them but generally speaking probably two or three at least that says um oh i didn't like smoky whiskey before but actually this one they either say but this one's all right or this one's good or very good or i'm actually enjoying it you know this you know the very th- various things that people could say but um we get a lot of positive response from it because it's a different smoke than people i think might be more not familiar with necessarily but um but assume things everything's going to be a big tcp iodine uppercut up the nose and, you know down the back of the throat of things from the sort of the southeastern isla three mm-hmm. um who i absolutely i i love that's my jam i'll just say quickly that yeah. uh, but but there's there's i like a soft smoke as well i like a sort of softer sweeter smoke and that's what you get with us and our peat comes from um sweden as well as i mentioned couldn't get more swedish if we tried um but from the cadin cadin mossen bogs peat bogs which are about i think i think quite close so i'll, I'll tell you this in more detail when i go and visit them next week but uh mm. i think about 40 50 kilometers away from the distillery so that, that in this day and age, I'd call that local, Pete, you know, local enough. Say. Excellent, excellent. Um, people are sort of chucking in their sort of order of favourites now. So um, I'll, we'll get cool. to that in a moment, I think. But um, if, if you've got your list of favourites and you've been watching, please do uh, put it in the comments and we'll throw it up and talk about it. Um, I'll give you mine in a moment as well. And I'm sure uh, Rich will too. 
Um, just a quick question first, uh, though, um, this is, uh, w uh, from Whiskey with Molly. Will McBear ever bring out more core ranges? Um, love them all. Sad to see when things get sold out, which is interesting because the the main core range um, I, I, I see constantly, which is awesome. And then you have your kind of seasonal and your moment range, which ebb and flow and come and go. Yeah. Um, core range. There may be changes to the core range on the horizon this year. Um, it would be more like um, uh, more like a, a, a change rather than an addition, I would say. Um, but but one that is one that is a very positive one, I think as well. Um, or just that I think will be uh, again for want of a better term, just I think quite a cool change, something that I'm I'm excited to to see. Um, but yeah, so no no additions to the core range, but a slight amendment to it coming soon. Watch this space. Um, but yeah, see the seasonal ones. These these are the ones that will sort of that were are more likely to to run out at some point soon, um, and moment ranges as well because the, the moments have been four thousand bottles or so. Some of them, some of them have been a thousand. Um, yeah. Yeah, from now on, there'll be sort of no more than two thousand in each. And then this the seasonal range, the, the seasonal range probably takes anywhere from eighteen months to two years, I think, to go through basically. So if there's a seasonal range whiskey that you like, and it's come out. You know getting closer to a year and a half two years ago um buy a bottle or two now because once they're gone they won't be coming back in the in the, in the same form that they are now yeah yeah absolutely because they're not like i mean they're the limited release but there's still quite a lot of bottles floating around um mostly isn't there usually about i want to say fifteen thousand odd if, if i remember rightly give, give or take yeah give or take for, for the for the seasonals and uh, and they are limited edition in mm. the in the strictest sense of the term as in you know once they're gone they're gone um, not very limited in their number. The ones that are limited in their number and that you might need to act more quickly on would be the moment range, of which yeah. they'd only be a few thousand. And we tend to only get about 200 to 250 of those over here in the UK anyway. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so we mentioned about um, uh, the order of things. Uh, yeah, some people are saying, uh, so Nick here saying that he likes the X port first. Um, nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, and then followed by the bourbon, followed by the smoking and cognac last. Um, and he makes a good point here that um, although we talk about, I, I always say um, first and last, and really I shouldn't, I should say um, yeah, uh, favourite to least favourite maybe, because there's no bad whiskies here. That's I think that's fair to say. No bad whiskies at all. What about, what about your fa favourite to not? Oh, yeah, because because least favourite still has like to me a relatively <laughs> negative connotation with it. Although obviously that isn't really. But like your what's your most favourite to your not quite most favourite? Maybe some that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's too much spin, but yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. The other thing to note as well is that we we always talk about this sort of thing. Is that um like tomorrow I might think something better. Uh, something something um, else is my favourite. Um, yeah. Yeah. Probably more often than not, I'm going to pick the smoky one um because that's the uh, that's where i lie you know me um same as you really um i should say as well uh thanks to jez uh jez rooney for uh for becoming a member as well another member um he actually is running a distillery um, fairly close to me in the midlands so that's cool i'll be keeping an eye on him and uh and they're making english rye which is uh which is cool oh what oh i think what's, what's the name of this this operation i think i might have got um it's mirth i want to say mercia but i guess the proper way of yeah. saying it would be mercia but, oh, um, you mean, oh uh, Mer Mercia is how I was. Mercia, certainly, yeah. That's I think yeah. uh, I've, I've heard talk about this in in, in recent days. So I think uh, and uh, and Tom Lindsay, give a shout out to uh, to the Spirit Works. Thanks very much for oh. letting us come and launch uh, Brooks Deluxe with you a few weeks ago. Um, I think they had a conversation recently as well that Tom was quite uh, happy to have had. So uh, I'm sure he doesn't mind me saying. <laughs> um, but yeah, looking forward to seeing that. Any anyone new starting up and doing things, and there's someone else um, in the comments as well that's that started, you know, in Birmingham. I'm sure you know um yeah yeah. So, uh, awesome, yeah i think it's just it's just exciting i think it's exciting to see more and more things start up i just i can't wait to see where in what direction everything goes because you know english whiskey i think is uh is a very exciting scene so best of luck to everyone that's uh that's got any skin in the game absolutely absolutely yeah people have been asking me if it's something that i'd want to do uh, in the future and i think probably not um i'm quite happy to sit on the uh on the consumer -y side of things and just sort of like occasionally put out something like that um rather than spending all day making it myself but um yeah more than happy to to support people um we've got a, another port um preferer here this is a, i think this is a, a fairly common 
um, string of preferences, which is cool. Um, people are asking what yours might be as well, but we'll come to us in a bit, I think. Yeah. Uh, New World Rum Club uh, likes the bourbon cask first, which is, um, if you'd have asked me what he would have chosen before, I don't think it would have been that. So that's interesting. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, another another port first, um, saying, surprise, the cognac is very nice. Yeah, it is very nice, very nice. It's, it's interesting. So the, the, the port one first. So... Um, that from so the the port and I might be giving a bit away on you know what my, my order might be. There's a, there's a bit of a dryness on the finish to it. So I'm I'm, I'm generally of drier finishes. I mean there's something that works very well with this. So so whenever I go into tastings and I do tastings with this pack, uh, it's sort of maybe it's like a, a, a I don't want to say a, a prejudice because that's not the right word. Mm. Oh, I think you're um, you're chopping it. up a little bit there. Oh, Am I just back? A couple. yeah. Sure. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. I'll just I'll wrap that up real quickly, just in case it happens again. But um, I, I always wonder how it would do because that that sort of that dry flash that you get there. But it's mm. uh, but I think the, the the palette and then the end of the finish is nice and juicy. So definitely, you know, a bit more up my street. But that drying bit, I always think that that might put some people off. So it's super interesting to see so many people put the port as their first or second. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I think yeah, I'll keep throwing them up here as well. Um, and an important note here that Jeff Whiskey's making um, is that these are the top four McMirrors I have tried. And this is really the main reason why um, when we started talking about doing this project, um, when you sort of mentioned that we, we would quite like to do the reserve cask, I was all over it because um, I've loved McMirrors since I first started drinking them. But when I think you sent me a, a few samples of reserve last year sometime, and it literally was a little bottle and it just said reserve on it. It had no, no other information. And I thought one day I just picked it up and pulled it in and I was just like, like, what is this? This is amazing. It's like, it, like not to say anything bad about the rest of the mirror range, but the reserve casks are properly the, the top echelon of the stuff that you're making. Oh, I think, have we lost you? Have we lost you? He's still, are you still there? He's frozen a little bit, but I'll chuck up some comments while he, while you catch up. Yeah, I can see you again now. Yeah, back. So I've just I've just rapidly tried to put my mobile hotspot on my phone, um, just just there as an insurance policy should this happen again. Um, no, no worries, no worries. It happens. Um, yeah. Streaming can be quite um, intensive on the computer. Um, thankfully, I bought myself a nice big powerhouse thing recently. Uh, well, I'll say recently, it's like last year. But um, yeah, so uh, so John's saying he likes the uh, the pre store um smoky rum cask i'll be talking about paris yeah john john i mean if, if if you want anyone to help with that as i said earlier i'm trying to round a few people that i know um up mm -hmm. to do it so i'll definitely be happy to uh to, to share the burden with you so to speak if uh if you're interested yeah um uh, whiskey shorts hello tom nice to see you um four so yeah smoky what was three so smoky then port uh, then the bourbon then the um the cognac, which um, I have to say, uh, going to my preferences, um, the smoky one, clear, clear winner for me, um, always was going to be, I have to say. Um, but then the bourbon, the elegant bourbon, um, I just smelt it again, and it's, it even stands up to the smoke. Right. It's so good. Uh, and then the export, and then the cognac, like last place, um, still would be more than happy to have uh, some, some more of that. But um, it was, yeah, yeah. Um, a bit too light for my liking, I guess, overall. But, um, yeah, really tasty. The smoky one's just blowing me away, though. It's so good. What about you, yes. Rich? What's your order of preference there? Yeah, so it's, 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 it's smoky for me, and not just because it's smoky, but I just – it's – this this whiskey out of the four, for me, just happened. It's just – it's the one that, that speaks to me the most, I think. Um, and as I've said, you know, a, a number of times now, but – the American oak with our spirit, it's just, I think it just works so incredibly well. And uh, whether it's elegant or smoky, it just, it seems to work. So yeah, smoky for me. And then I think it's the bourbon elegant for me, um, which is you know, out of, of all the whiskies that we've got out of all the reserve cast, that is the cheapest one that we have available. Uh, but for me, it's, I think I really like, I'm partial to our spirit character. And as you know, I said earlier about, you know, I've been on a bit of a refill ex bourbon thing for a while. Cause you get more of a chance to see what spirit characters like and thing. I think you can get more of our spirit character through with that bourbon one. And I think it just, it works well with bourbon being again, you know, quite close to being American Oak. It's just had a bourbon in for a certain amount of time first. 
those sort of those vanillas and caramels work so well with i think and and to, to go back to what i think ryan clark put earlier about um you know like apple sours tank fastics or whatever mm-hmm. it was that he said i think it's about that that for me that's what i find in many of our, our elegant bourbon casks and like the the apple apple tank fastics those sort of like the green and see-through like dummy things whatever that's my favorite thing i have a tank plastic bag so uh so if i can find that in a whiskey happy days for me and then so between between the last two there's not a great deal in it but um but i will be decisive and say i think cognac third and then port fourth but as you said earlier if it's not too heavy on the spin it doesn't mean it's sort of it's like last and and worst it just mm. is my fourth favorite of what we have here basically because i do enjoy it i do enjoy it but i think for me because of that dry flash towards the finish that's what that's why i've got it in fourth um yeah. i enjoy enjoy all the rest of it but that dry flash for that it means that i've got something to make my decision with basically and uh, and rather than sit here and tell you i'm not going to tell you my order i'll just i'd rather just say exactly what it is yeah absolutely absolutely um i think why not because it, as we we've cleared up already it's like they're, they're all good and we're just sort of picking a preference about what we like and um, mine was very similar to yours apart from the, the last two but as you quite rightly said and i think neil uh, whiskey trial said a bit earlier on as well that um quite easily um he could do these in pairs so like these two would be interchangeable and these two would be interchangeable for first and second and third and fourth and that's yeah. that's the beauty of this sort of whiskey and we're, we're putting everyone on the spot and saying what's your favorite um tomorrow it might be different depending on what you've eaten you've had a curry one day something else might stand out a bit more you've had just some chips yeah. or something you know it's the music the music that's on the company that you're in the other whiskies you might have had that evening yeah you, you asked yeah, again you asked me tomorrow american oak smoky is yes, i think it's going to be first you know six days out of seven for me but um but the other three to put them in a trio rather than just like the pairs you said they could be interchangeable on another day for sure absolutely absolutely um well we finished the um the four drams but if anyone's got any questions um about the uh the reserve casks or or whatnot um i'll throw up the um the banner again um for how people can get in touch um but i'll also um if anyone's missed uh, any of this or can't be bothered to write it down or whatever you know you all know me you've got my email address um feel free to fire across to me and i can put you in touch with uh, with rich or if uh if you manage to get this and go direct to him you know this is not um you know, there's no there's no commission for me or anything like that. I'm genuinely here to 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 enthuse about this stuff. So feel free, you don't have to involve me whatsoever. But um I think it's a great, great idea. Um it's something that I'm definitely gonna be looking forward to in the future. Um when I can for sure. Because this like you said earlier, there's some um, more affordable ones and some uh, more expensive ones depending on on, on what you want to opt for. Yeah, so I think the the elegant ex bourbon with everything, as I said, again, included bottling, labeling, insurance, warehousing, I think is at 17. Let me just double check here. Mm. I think it's 1700 and something. So I bear me two seconds. I did know these off the top of my head, but I've been off for two weeks um, up in Scotland getting hitched, as I mentioned earlier. So, um, yeah, so it's 1742 for the elegant ex bourbon and uh, 54, 50 centiliter bottles um, mm. in there. Uh, and again, that is everything included, no hidden costs. And you just got to pay the, the duty in if it's you know three years, four years, five years down the line. We've got uh, the middle band. You've got American oak, our anniversary cask, which is ex-bourbon staves, Swedish oak cask ends. Um, the port and Oloroso. So American oak, anniversary cask, port and Oloroso. You can get those for £2,241. And then the rum cask is two thousand five hundred and eight pounds. That's twenty eight liters. Something to bear in mind. So two liters shy of these others, but something that is incredibly right. Actually, pretty damn rare, even as far as the stuff that we do goes. And you get to go over to Paris and things and go and try stuff. And then uh, the top tier is where you'll find the cognac, basically. So uh, in the top tier, you've got uh, cognac, cloudberry wine, PX sherry, and then Swedish oak, and that's two thousand five hundred and twenty one which you divide you know, by roughly 54, because that's how many bottles you have to work out the price per bottle there. And then the, the recipes, the spirit recipes, no extra cost for elegant recipe, 230 pounds for smoky, 460 pounds for extra smoky or for pre-stored elegant, and then 700 pounds, 720 pounds for the pre-stored smoky. Um, again, because we malt and peat our own barley, the smoky recipes you've got to pay a little bit for, just because you know we, we 
make so little of it basically as well um but that's it yeah if you have a look if people i mean I'll, I'll, i've just gone through those prices a bit there but if you have a look at macmira.com and go and look at the reserve cast page there's a calculator at the bottom so you can play around with the different you know um different options but there are more options available if you come to me direct basically so um so yeah, anyone that is interested in something that isn't on a website let me know but also if you come to me direct once you've had a look at the website we can get you 10 percent off um whether that's you doing it on your own or doing it as part of a group really makes no difference to me yeah that's pretty awesome um mccann final rare aka the doc he's just asking about mcmira moments and what's my favorite um i'll ask you as well what your favorite is rich the actually the only one um that i've had a bottle of is the uh skog salon which was lovely um wasn't expecting to like that but um it grew on me as the bottle went down and it ended up being fantastic um but i keep meaning to look at more but i've tried some samples of different things and they're all good but um i want to try a smoky one that's my my next uh my next look at well, i think yeah. i tried the um does it count as a, a moments the uh american american-esque rock what one i can't remember what it's called now no it's not it's, it's in a black case but it's not a moment no i think um there's the I think well one one smoky one you have tried I think is the lava although mm. the, I wouldn't smoke wasn't probably as, as as forward there as it is on some of our other peated ones it's far more um, sort of in the background a bit it's it's uh, that was sort of sherry casks running the show a bit more on that one um, but there is there is a smoky moment whiskey in the works so uh, oh. again to say again you know watch your space um but fa favorites for me is the you know the caribbean the rum cast one that we've done with plantation rum it is, i've got more and more into that over the last few months i've just i've, I've that's something that I, I will sort of quite happily even though i you know drink a lot of mac mirror for work um that's something that i just I'll, I'll pour a dram of and have with mates and things when they come around but the um the effa as well was the one that got me into mac mirror when i discovered mm -hmm. them in 2015 that's the one that like you know opened uh well, i don't know pricked my ears up i guess would be the term and just thought bloody hell that's different never tried anything like it that's 20 casks 19 swedish um birch sap wine casks and then one cherry wine cask from kirsch uh, a german cherry wine producer and i think it's just that's magnificent that is that's again that's something that um i'll have with mates when they come around to say look at what you know we can do look at what i work with and stuff so yeah effort and caribbean are the two for me awesome awesome um neil's asking uh is it how's the popularity going worldwide because obviously you guys are pushing huge in the uk at the moment um yeah. how's europe and uh, worldwide going yeah good question so um i can say uh we we've got a, a distributor in australia that is sort of just doing a, a a bit more and more business as things go not not enormous by any stretch but but growing however um i mean you just mentioned svens look a medicansk which is Swedish smoke in American oak casks, our, our, uh, our peated um, sort of special release whiskey. Uh, I think we sold about four or 5,000 bottles to Thailand in the last six months of that because they've just gone absolutely bonkers for it over there. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think uh, like like any other company out there, it'd be great to break into America. Now that they've changed you know, bottle sizes and stuff, it makes it you know a bit more of a viable proposition for us to, to, to find our way over there. We're talking to a, a bottler from there at the moment about um, about doing a single cask with them that sort of might pave the way for us. Um, but yeah, so so across the world, South Africa, we're about to do something with uh, with a quite a well known South African shop down there. Something small to start because they still do have seven hundred and fifty mil as their standard size bottle. You can do fifty, but um, you know we've only got a limited amount of, of whiskey that's in there. So I think yeah, Europe Europeish is primarily where we're operating and uh, and and where you know we're, we're seeing sort of like most sales and most growth but yeah southeast asia at the moment is something that's that we're doing we're doing quite a lot in now that's that's grown very quickly and uh and to a, yeah quite a large degree so we are expanding yeah mm. we are expanding. it's funny to say it as well because um uh, a buddy of mine who lives over in taiwan who's um who did pop on briefly now but he's it's so early in the morning um he's just done a mcmira tasting tonight um oh, with okay. with the taiwan rep so um that's oh, interesting um cool. completely different like, like not reserve cast or anything like that so he was a bit jealous but um obviously we couldn't be sending that far flung just yet maybe one day in the future we'll be able to manage something like that but um the logistical yeah. nightmare of that uh whiskey shorts um is asking uh, will we see a no nonsense no nonsense mcmira at any point um probably i would say probably um we actually haven't spoken about it yet have we rich but we probably should yeah. 
We haven't, but I mean, like you know, you, you've you've got a soft spot for us. We've got a soft spot for you. You know, it's all it's all it's all love. Um, maybe there will. I think uh, Tom, I'll, I'll I'll sort your dram out for asking that question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, uh, there's a PX. Uh, so basically, he's asking um, how to get hands on a sample of that. I think we mentioned a bit earlier about how you get a consultation, right? So um, yeah, we. I don't think we'd have um a sample of, of a px cask at the moment to to sort someone out with however i'm getting a bit of feedback i don't know if that's sort of uh reverberating a bit too much no it's gone now um oh, however if, i don't know where whereabouts your, your base whiskey molly if you happen to be based anywhere near um either of uh, milroy's uh, of soho or milroy's of spitalfields um they do have their um px cask that they, they bought from us last year which i've got a little bit of left here and i've managed to hustle one of my colleagues who did get two of these bottles and had one spare into swapping one of my bimbers with him a bimber that he was after um this this milroy's px was a pre-stored elegant and then it spent 19 months in a 30 litre px cask and i tried i don't know four five hundred whiskies last year i think we all went you know i host lots of tastings but i partake in in more than i host and tried lots of whiskies that for me was and being a, a, as objective as i possibly can was my in my top two whiskies i think at one point i had it as my number one and um the other one in my top two was like a 93 bowmore bottled by car Moore. um you know a really like rather expensive but incredibly tasty dram and this this five and a half year old like whiskey from a distillery that's only 21 years old themselves um was was out of those hundreds of whiskies that I tried was, was my favorite. Um, and I think, uh, whiskey shorts might, might weigh in and, um, and let me know. Cause he did try that on a tasting as well at some point with me. And, uh, we had, I don't want to say exactly what, you know, what they were, but there were some 21 year olds, 24 year old whiskies in the mix. And all five of us voted for the five and a half year old Mac Mira as the favorite of the evening as well. It's just, it's a sensational whiskey. I think PX and us go well together, but there's not much of it about. Yeah, if yeah that's more. something I'll, I'll definitely be keen on, uh, interested to, to try some of that. Um, Tom's also asking if we can get a smoky port cask. I, I don't see why not, right? Well, let's have a look, Tom. We'll have a look. We'll see what we can do, mate. Yeah. But yeah, you Excellent. can. Excellent. Uh, let me bin that off. Okay, well, we've um, we've gone to um, well over an hour and a half now, so I don't want to take up too much of uh, your evening, Richard. Thank you very much for coming along. Um, it's been an absolutely outstanding tasting, um, something that's hopefully everyone's enjoyed. And if you weren't um, drinking along with us, hopefully you've enjoyed it as well. Uh, we've gone through how you can sort of get in touch with with Richard, and that information is going to be uh, in the description below. So um, if you can't find that, let me know. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to put you in touch. But the cool thing about Richard is he's um, not just a sales rep or uh, an ambassador or whatnot. He's also a major part of the community. Um, he's in the Discord channels, the CEOs. He's in in, in mine. Um, so he's very easy to get hold of. Um, probably a bit too easy to get hold of you, is that right, Richard? But he's sitting there yeah. on your phone. Yeah, but basically, it's uh, I can't escape it. But then, as I said at the beginning, it's you know, this is my hobby. This is something I like to do very much. So, uh, you know, happy to field any questions or any queries uh, as we go. Um, yeah, and look forward to it. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for coming on. Um, hopefully, you guys have enjoyed it. Um, I've just noticed in our little um, off uh, off camera kind of um, notes page, there's a screenshot gone up of us um, both pulling faces. So that's cool. <laughs> 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 um but excellent thank for, thank you very much for for coming in and talking to us about uh, your reserve casks um uh, again uh, thank you everyone who got involved in this uh, make sure you hit like and um, provide some feedback to me if you want or to me if you've enjoyed this sort of thing because this is definitely something i would look to do more of in the future um, either with uh, McMira or, or further afield if people are interested in such things. Um, equally, if this hasn't been of interest to you, let me know because I like to get that feedback, both uh, good and bad, how I can improve what I can do. Because uh, I think as someone said a bit earlier, I don't know how they uh, how Vin juggled um, hosting and doing all the other bits as well. It's very difficult, um, something I will look to change for the next one so that I can just uh, talk and enjoy a bit more. But, um, yeah, it's been superb, absolutely superb. Thanks for coming along, Richard. No, uh, thanks for having me and thanks everyone for getting involved. And uh, yeah, and thanks everyone that, that's commented, asked any questions, let us know in your notes. Um, as you mentioned at the beginning, Vin, it's great when you can do it on Zoom and you can interact with everyone as well. But when you're doing it like this, it's, it makes such a difference when you have people 
in the comment section and, and being as lively uh, as everyone has um as much as you know vin and i might enjoy each other's company i'd like to say if i'm not being too generous with that um you know it's very it's, it's it's nice to have other people in the mix as well and to feel all in it together so um thanks very much and uh and a massive thank you ving for uh for having us and 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 us being your first people on as well i think when we spoke about it before i thought we might be the first one or two i hadn't realized until we started that well, we actually were the first so um yeah i yeah, couldn't be prouder yeah absolutely well the, the the funny thing about doing stuff like this although the the um the value is there it's um it's always difficult to get the um the, f the first hook in let's say um but um hopefully now we've done this thing there'll be uh, quite obvious value to it and um and, and people will be, be be looking at doing more stuff like this for sure yeah well, and good luck to you as well and if anyone uh, anyone in the comments knows or fancies any brands coming on with vin you know i'm sure give them a little shout out let them know that you thought it went well if you did or just tell them that you thought it went well anyway and um and and, and try and send some business vin's way because i think uh, anything we can do to support vin growing what he does and things as well i think uh we should look after each other and especially someone like him so yeah best of luck Thank you very much man it's, uh, it's um nice to hear very nice to hear yeah it's something i've always wanted to do is give back a little bit to uh to the guys watching because they're the guys who make it happen yeah, um, sure. but yeah i think that's a great time to uh to round it up and uh, and finish off um again massive thanks to everybody for supporting the channel uh supporting mcmira um make sure if i mean if you can't um stretch to a cask which is obviously not going to be for everybody make sure you go and check out mcmira in general because there i do a lot of their reviews so you can check out um, most of the core range and some of the other stuff as well so if you if you want to sort of know before you buy then go and check out my uh, videos on those because um yeah I, I rave about these guys even the um the mac which is the only one with um chill filtration and added color is still really good <laughs> so excellent yeah thanks very much everyone again um and we'll see you tomorrow for a review and then hopefully for more live streams like this coming soon Lovely. catch you again uh, in the future see you later Enjoy. everyone later, Rich. Bye.